Hey, what's up guys? It's Dan Lags, and I am back again for a different video for you guys today. And on my channel and all over YouTube, you always see videos titled How to Build or Minecraft House Tutorial. But today, I'm going to be showing you guys how not to build. And basically, in this video, I'm just going to be going through some simple guidelines of things that you should probably try to avoid when building in Minecraft. And these are just really basic things. I mean, if you don't want to avoid these things and you like buildings like this or whatever, um, this is just, you know, simply my opinion. So you don't have to take this into consideration if you don't want to. And um, hopefully a lot of you guys already use a lot of these techniques, uh, I guess, avoid a lot of these techniques. And um, if you don't, then you, maybe you'll learn something in this video. But this is just supposed to be just a little fun video. Just, uh, just some things that I follow whenever I'm building and just to, you know, have a little fun with it. So guys, we're going to start a little countdown here right now. Coming in at number one, and these aren't in any particular order, but the first thing that you should avoid trying to do when building in Minecraft is connecting blocks. So right here on this little sample of a, like a modern wall of like a, maybe a modern house, I have this clay block connecting to the snow block here as like kind of like these two window dividers. And this is a big no-no. This is like one of the major things that you should try to avoid when trying to build modern houses. And uh, I'm just going to turn my... Um, whoops, wrong. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going to the save. I'm going to turn on my uh, HUD real quick just to show you guys what I mean by this. So basically, to avoid problems like this, I would just suggest just kind of alternating your uh, your shapes. Make sure that they don't connect directly like this. You want to make sure that there's like at least one block of a separation between them. So something like that and just something adding something as simple as that, just one extra layer will just transform this and make it look 10 times better than it did before. So make sure that you avoid trying to connect blocks like this in modern houses. I have an example of it over here. Um, the reason why I say mainly in modern houses because in traditional style houses like this one, uh, you have a lot of these connections like here, and this is just part of the style of the house, like the border of cobblestone and the border of snow on the green wool. So that's just kind of like this, the style of the house. So on those kind of houses, it's fine. But on modern houses over here, I'll give you an example. This black wool here connects to this snow. If this snow wasn't here, we'd have a very awkward transition between the black wool and the snow. And that's something you want to avoid at all costs, and that's the reason why I added this snow pillar here just to simply avoid that thing. So something you want to avoid, guys, that's the first tip here as I get stuck inside this palm tree. And we're going to move on to the second tip right now. Okay, guys, how not to build in Minecraft. Tip number two is accounting for windows, both on the exterior and the in interior. You want to make sure that your windows are always lined up. Make sure you, you don't... Uh, you, it's kind of hard to explain, but just try not to make your windows... Uh, don't account for only the outside when you're building windows. Make sure you account for the inside as well. So basically my example here as I try to explain this is we have this window here which is based off of this colonial house over there. And on the outside, you know, it looks good. All the windows are lined up symmetrically. But if you come on the inside here, the windows are not lined up very well. And here's why. So down here, right, if we were to get out some spruce wood, right, this would be the floor of the first floor of this house right here of the spruce wood. And it would come right across like this. I don't know why I was going to the ground like that, my bad. And then this would be one block below the window, so you can just kind of look out the window perfectly. But if you're up here, it's actually not lined up because um, you know, you want to be able to stack your, your floors two blocks. That way you have a ceiling and a floor for the second floor. And then all of a sudden, you're at the bottom of the ground here with the window, and it doesn't line up with the first floor. So you want to make sure that you account for that when you're building. Do not avoid that. Make sure that you're paying attention because the solution to this would be going like this. We'd make this one block taller here and uh you know take up this the glass here if i can find glass in my inventory and not break the glass that's already been placed so you go like this you just make it one block taller and that way you're accounting for the flooring on the inside as well as the windows still look great on the outside so that's our second tip guys do not avoid the interior when putting windows in another thing with this as well is that there's only two blocks of separation between these two windows so it's going to be awkward placing a wall in between these so if you want a wall in between the two windows make sure you put it three blocks that way it's symmetrical on both sides so there's your second uh you know how not to build make sure that you account for that kind of thing so it's not really a how not to build it's just kind of like a tip that you should just make sure you don't avo make sure you avoid you know just focusing only on the exterior of a build so that's kind of the example for that so we're gonna move on to the third one right now guys Okay guys, how not to build, tip number three, never avoid terraforming. So terraforming is an important part of building in Minecraft, especially on a regular world, super flat, not so much. But it, the craziest part about Los Angeles here, which is, this is still Los Angeles, 90% of Los Angeles has been terraformed so far. And as you can see, all of this here, right here, this hilly side here, has all been man-made, built by myself. So basically, if you come inside of this, it's basically just kind of like a hollowed out hill under here. That used to be a jungle biome, and this is where the um, the highway comes through. So it's kind of just, you know, turns this into like a little bay area here. 
and that's the idea of terraforming so do not do not avoid it and make sure you do it right make sure you make it look as best you can towards an actual minecraft seed so if you come over here this is what an actual minecraft seed would look like and if you look over there it's very little difference you could it looks very um artific or doesn't look artificial at all it looks very realistic and that's kind of the thing you want to go for just don't avoid it guys make sure you do your terraforming if you are building on a regular map it's very important and i can't even think of a scenario where you could possibly avoid it right here is a like a halfway terraform something i guess i haven't finished this yet but basically this whole thing here has been flattened out and i'm going to take all the way through here with grass and things and something you don't want to do when you're terraforming is make sure you don't just put platforms like this make sure you actually like put make it a gradual decline because you don't want to just like have like a random like drop off right there because i see that a lot surprisingly and it just it's no bueno so make sure you don't have that make sure you make it gradual in terms of your terraforming and it will look excellent guys so don't avoid it make sure you do it and we're going to move on to number four okay guys coming in at number four on our countdown is desert biomes so you want to make sure you avoid desert biomes do not build in them if you can and especially make sure that you don't put grass down in the desert biome this is one of my ultimate pet peeves when i see desert grass and like it just looks absolutely ugly it just trust me you don't want it if you compare desert grass to regular grass the the difference is like insane just try to avoid building suburban areas in the desert biome guys if you can i i would really just use the desert biome for like maybe like a beach or like um building some like a some southwestern houses or something like that because you don't you want to try to avoid the green stuff in the desert biome as you can see oak leaves especially are absolutely hideous in this in this biome but if you absolutely have to build in this biome i would just recommend using green wool as the grass right here because it's just it's got that lush green color and then just using birch wood as your leaves and as you can see instead of having like this piss green which just looks disgusting you have a nice lush color so that's just pretty much the, the synopsis of this is just avoid the desert biome at all costs when you're trying to build like things with grass and bushes but if you absolutely have to build in the desert biome like i did here in los angeles i would recommend using green wool and birch leaves to kind of replace the uh, regular stuff so even though it doesn't look as good it's just it's a lot better than this so make sure you avoid the desert biomes at all costs guys and that is tip number four we're gonna move on to tip number five right now at our number five spot in things to avoid in minecraft is avoid glowstone Make sure you don't have it uh, showing in any of your houses. Like, don't just place it in the middle of the room randomly. Make sure you hide it as best as you can. So I'm just going to show you guys some quick tips on how to hide your glowstone. Glowstone is like this prehistoric looking rock, but it's necessary to illuminate your houses. Other than, like, stone, I don't really find another block in the natural texture pack that looks uglier than glowstone. So, you know, you have to be able to hide it, but it is a necessary evil. So let's go ahead and show you guys some tips on how to hide it. Hopefully you guys know all this stuff already, but we're going to reiterate it anyway. First thing you can do is just add like a little cauldron bush here. And even though the glowstone is still popping through the bottom a little bit, it's still a really good way to light a room. Just like put this in the corner of a room and it's a good way to hide the glowstone. Another thing you can do is put it underneath of an ender portal frame. So I can put the uh, ender portal frame down. I have ender on top of that and you can get like your little ender bush things here that I do a lot. And that's another excellent way to hide the glowstone. This makes it completely invisible. Another thing you can do is actually put it behind a painting. So what you can do is you can just kind of fill in some snow here and then just place a painting and that's another awesome way it'll still light it up and uh you don't have to worry about you know seeing the glowstone good way to light a room so guys those are the three tips uh you can also hide it underneath of um i don't know what are those things called um enchantment tables you can hide them underneath of pistons some other things but these are the main three things that i like to use to hide glowstone so just a couple tips for you guys make sure you don't just put glowstone randomly all over your house it looks so ugly and uh, we're going to move on to number six. So guys, don't go anywhere. Okay, guys, for number six on our countdown, well, it's really not a countdown, but we are back here in Los Angeles for number six. And on this one, I want you guys to avoid using the same block for both roofing and for the walls of a house. So the example for this one is this traditional beach house that I built a few months ago. And the walls of this house are birch wood. And the ceiling, roofing, whatever you want to call it, is spruce wood so basically if i was to go ahead and switch out this um spruce wood staircasing for the roofing into birch wood you're just gonna guys you guys gonna get an idea of how ugly it looks and this is something that i just want you guys to avoid just as if you can uh, just don't use the same block for the ceiling or the roofing i don't know why i keep saying ceiling for the roofing that you would use for the walls of the house it just doesn't look good guys trust me on this one um, just make sure you just, you know, vary it up, mix it up you know, as much as you can, unless you're playing like survival and you have to like build it. I mean, obviously, but, um, this is just another quick tip, just something that you want to try to avoid. And I'll just give you guys an example, just a short example. But as you can see, 
It kind of looks weird, as you can see. Way too much of one color, and that's something you definitely want to avoid, guys. So that's number six. We're going to move on to number seven right now. All right, our number seven, how not to build tip, is something that really grinds my gears. So all too often, I see people who plant trees like this, but they don't uh, make them big. They just simply bone meal the top, they just build up a few blocks and just bone meal it. Now, you want to make it so it's big also. So you want to place the block above it. I'm sure 99% of you guys know how to do this already. And you want to plant the tree that's going to actually grow. So as you can see, the difference between these trees is significant. And obviously, this is not a great example at all, but I am just don't really feel like having to redo that. So... Um, I mean, right here, excellent example. It's the exact same technique that I did over there. It's just not as good. And uh, these are the kind of trees you want, guys. You don't want these small, stubby trees that just look bad. They just don't equal to the size of the house. You want a big tree like this one. Like, th uh, this tree right here is perfect for that house because it's a good size. So just make sure you avoid putting small trees around your house. I'd recommend these big trees pretty much in every situation, unless you want to build some, like, artificial trees like these. But... Um, yeah, that's tip number seven. Just avoid using small trees, guys, and just make sure you use these big ones. So we're going to move on to number eight. Number eight tip on our how not to build countdown is fencing. So guys, when you're doing fencing, you want to make sure you place your fencing one block away from the curb at all times. This is something I see a lot, and I uh, just want to make sure that you guys know to do this. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys do it already, but this is just something you want to reiterate. Um, as you can see with these fences, it's a few blocks away from the grass or from the edge of the... I guess the pavement here and where the sidewalk connects to the uh, the grass here. You want to make sure that you don't place your, your fences right on top of the connection between the grass and the sidewalk. That's just not a good idea and it just doesn't look good. So as you can see, like I'll just do a quick example of like take a couple blocks over with this fencing. And you know, you want to make sure that you put your fencing one block in on the grass. So as you can see, you know, not only do we have this connection between the grass and the dirt or sorry, and the snow and the dirt, which looks terrible. But, you know, it also connects to the driveway, or not the driveway, the sidewalk. I'm getting my words all mixed up right now. And you really just want to put it one block in. That way it's not connecting. It's going to look a lot better. Obviously, this is, I don't have a fence here, so there's really no point to adding one here. Because I don't need one here. That's why there's not one. But I'm just giving you guys the idea here. Just when you're doing your roads like this, guys, if you do do roads like this, I said doo doo. Make sure that you put your fencing one block in off the grass. It's just going to look better every single time. And that is another tip. Make sure you guys avoid that. And we're going to move on to the final tip, guys. Okay, guys, our last and most certainly not least final tip. And this is, has to do with roofing here. So this roofing right here, as you can see, the roofing sticks out one block from the wall on both sides here. This is something you want to do on your roofing all the time. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like if you take this away. This is something that you got to avoid. This is probably one of the most important things. And I'm sure a lot of you guys already do this. So that's good because you, you don't want your roofing to be on the same level as the wall. It just looks really bad. You want to make sure it sticks out a little bit. Because as you can see, it just it doesn't look good at all. You want to make sure you avoid that at all costs. That's probably one of the most important tips here. And uh, I know that probably 90 99% of you guys already do this. But I just want to, you know, again, just make sure. And uh, that's going to do it, guys. That's all the tips I got for you guys. Okay, so now following these guidelines, you can turn something that looks absolutely hideous into something that won't make your eyes bleed. So guys, that's going to do it for the video. Just a little fun thing that I just wanted to do for you guys today. And I hope you guys liked it. So if you did, be sure to click the like button. That would be obvious. And uh, subscribe if you're new to my channel. And guys, that has been pretty much it. Just a fun little video. And I hope you guys maybe <laughs> maybe you learned something from it. I don't know. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. It's Bidet Langs. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Peace out.